Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. Let's begin by reviewing the four standard views of the cardiac echo exam. The first view, as shown in proposition A, is the parasternal views, both long and short axis planes, and this is going to be performed directly on the anterior chest wall. The second view is where proposition B is shown here, coming from the abdominal position or the subxiphoid view of the heart. The last view is going to be shown by proposition C, the apical view of the heart at the point of maximal impulse. This module will specifically focus on the parasternal views, specifically looking at the long axis plane. There's a great deal of information we can get from the parasternal long axis plane, so let's learn how to perform the examination. For this examination, it's optimal to use a small footprint phased array type probe that can easily sit between the ribs. We're going to place the probe just left of the sternum at about intercostal space 3 or 4, with the marker dot on the probe aimed down towards the patient's left elbow if the patient's left elbow is down by the side. That's with the caveat that the ultrasound screen indicator would be over towards the left of the screen. This will align the probe in the long axis of the heart. Occasionally, it can be somewhat difficult to get a good view of the heart from this plane, and moving the patient into the left lateral decubitus position can sometimes help imaging from the parasternal long axis plane of the heart. So now let's take a look at the images that we'll obtain by performing the parasternal long axis view of the heart. Here's a nice pictorial to the left, and what we see is that the most superficial structure will be the right ventricle. Notice that the right atrium is not seen from this plane. Directly posterior to the right ventricle will be the left ventricle, and to the right of the left ventricle will be seen the left atrium. We can also see the mitral valve in between the left atrium and the left ventricle, and a little bit of the aorta above the left atrium. Let's look at the ultrasound still image here to the right, and again we see the superficial right ventricle. Posterior, we see the left ventricle with its more muscular and hypertrophic walls. Notice the left atrium as seen to the right of the left ventricle and the mitral valve in between the two chambers. We categorize this as left ventricular inflow tract. Note the aortic valve sitting right above the left atrium, and we see a little bit of the aortic root there. This is what we categorize as aortic outflow tract. Let's now take a look at the parasternal long axis view of the heart in action. Remember again that the most superficial chamber will be the right ventricle, and the normal dimensions of the right ventricle are that it should be about half the size of the left ventricle. If the right ventricle is the same size of the left ventricle, that could be a sign of RV strain. We see the left ventricle posterior to the right ventricle. Note its hypertrophic walls. This patient actually had long-standing hypertension. Let's look at the percentage change from diastole through systole, and here we see that the walls come in well with each heartbeat, indicating good contractility. We see the left atrium to the right of the left ventricle, and notice the mitral valve flipping up and down in between the left atrium and the left ventricle. We see here good movement of the mitral valve, indicating a good amount of blood flowing between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Now just above the left atrium and to the right of the left ventricle, we see the aortic valve, and notice there, just to the right of the aortic valve, a little bit of the diamond-shaped aortic root. This will be our, our left ventricular outflow tract. Now another very important structure to identify on bedside sonography is the descending aorta, which is a cylinder cut in cross section right below the mitral valve as seen in this image. This is a very important landmark because the posterior pericardial reflection, that white line seen posterior to the left ventricle, comes off anterior to the descending aorta. This allows us to tell if the fluid that we see there may be pericardial or pleural. In conclusion, I'm glad I could share with you the Soundbites module going over part one, a parasternal long axis view of the heart. There's a great deal of information that we can gain by looking at the parasternal long axis view, looking for left ventricular contractility, the presence of a pericardial effusion, and also the possibility of right ventricular strain. So I hope to see you back in the future as we're going to cover further modules going over the parasternal views, the subxiphoid views, and the apical views. So I'll see you back as Sano Access continues.